Um, so when when we need to balance, try to think of balance poses, you know, so anytime you hear a yoga teacher say, today we're going to do balance. Um, I know a lot of people who just want to like turn around and walk out the door, right? And, and run the other way. Um, balance is hard for most of us. And it is something that as we age, our capacity for balance, like just about everything else, starts to be a little bit more challenging. So it's very important to, um, you know, the use it or lose it kind of mentality. You have to practice balance. It's not something that you can just expect to have good balance when you never practice balance. And the interesting thing about balanced postures is that they really dance inside your mind, not just inside your body. I think we can get um, caught up in the, uh, the, the attempt so much to balance and not fall that we have this um, sense that we're, we have success or failure, that there's nothing in between, that we either have good balance or bad balance, and we get very attached to wanting to balance to the point where we can stop breathing, we can get rigid, we can get hard, we can get upset when we don't have good balance. So um, try to see not only what's happening in your body with the fluctuations that you might experience, but notice the fluctuations of your mind. Um, sometimes I think a balancing practice is much more geared toward shifting your mindset than it is toward um, doing anything good for your body, although both will happen. So um, what is your relationship with balance? Uh, do you feel like you have good balance? Do you feel like you have bad balance? Do you never think about balance? Um, do you tend to trip? Uh, do you tend to uh, shuffle your feet? Do you look down when you're walking? Um, do you use a, a handrail when you're on stairs? And these are none of these are good or bad things. It's just to pay attention to what is the state of your of your mind and your body in relationship to supporting your your own body weight. So um, sit up straight and tall for a moment and contemplate the word as you close your eyes, the word balance. Um, you know, in yoga, we often think it means standing on one foot, but really, what does balance mean to you? When you uh, feel balanced, I don't mean in a posture, just in your mind and in your body, when you feel balanced, what is conjuring, what is conjured up in that when you think about it? Um, what are the sensations that um, your body feels when you are in a state of balance? How about your mind? What does this mean for your um, sense of equanimity? When you feel in balance, what is your state of grace? How do you interact with the world? How are things um, impacting you, you know, what is your reaction to things when you feel in balance? How is your perspective when you're in balance? So you'll probably notice that um, balance is a very, very useful supportive state. So if this is a goal to kind of feel balance, not to have balance, but to feel balance. It doesn't really matter if you're able to stand on one foot or not. It's a equanimity of mind body. So let's draw our attention into that as we uh, start to welcome in our breath and be aware of our body in space. How does your breath support the state of equanimity? Then we think of balance as, you know, two sides being equal, like a scale. But really balance is a constantly fluctuating state. It's not static. Very, rare, very rarely is it static either in the body or mind. So it calls for a state of grace and equanimity. So let's cultivate this through our breath. Can you observe and be patient watching the inhale? 
observing your exhale. Notice the shoulders, let them relax a little bit more. Notice your face and let it relax. Drop your ground or drop yourself into the ground. And if you're noticing that something in your life is way out of balance, like maybe you have an injury or maybe um, you are very sleep deprived or maybe you're working too much or maybe um, you're lonely or whatever it is, you know, whatever you feel is a little off balance. See if you can just notice and let as we bring our hands together and let an intention come. See if you can, your intention can be around shifting toward balance in whatever way you feel a little off, you know, where you're a little skewed, um, off kilter. What would it take in your day today to help you feel just a little bit more balanced in the way that you feel off kilter? And can you set this into an intention to offer yourself uh, a gift toward balance? Release the hands. Let's find our way onto our back. Right, so as you stretch out and lengthen through your body, such a gift to have your body and to have it be working well. So let's cherish what's working. Have deep gratitude for all the places in your body that feel good today. Let's stretch and lengthen arms overhead. You can reach the right side and reach the left side and just get the engines running a little bit, get the body to awaken and to open. And as you're ready, bring your knees into your chest and give yourself a little hug. You can rock a little bit, swing side to side. And let's circle the knees, rolling in one direction two or three times, feeling a sense of um, just what does it feel like across your sacrum? Can you have a little feeling of self massage there? Roll the other direction. Now let's open up and bring our knees away from the midline and back in. Pause in Supta Baddha Konasana just for a moment. So soles of the feet together. You can always put fists underneath your legs if you need to. And as you um, just rest your body down, this is big for a lot of people to allow their knees to kind of fall open. So just notice, even in this, does your pelvis feel balanced? Do you have a sense without looking that you have one knee that drops a little lower than the other knee? Just pay attention to the um, interoception, the sensing of the inner body, proprioception, where you are in space. And then without using your core, see if you can interlace your hands behind your head and pick up your head with your hands and look at your knees and see if your internal perception matches the external view. You know, do you have one knee that's a lot lower or higher? You know, is your internal perception um, matching what the external world is? And then relax your head down, relax your knees back into your chest and just rock a moment. And then take your right knee into your chest, stretch your left leg on the ground and let's move around in our ankles. Feel a good squeeze, hug your hip in or hug your knee into your hip squeezes and your knee squeezes. Feel some mobility in your feet. Do some circles with your ankles. And then let's change sides, left knee and right leg long on the ground, wiggle your toes, keep moving your feet. You can flex and point and just feel your ankles and drop some weight into your knee and hip. See if you can feel that deep compression in there. 
And then release that, stretch your body out like a star, reach into the edges of your body, wiggle your fingers and your toes and feel where you end. Okay, roll your wrists and your ankles while you're out here in space. And then draw your knees into your chest, pick up your head. Relax, let's do it one more time. Inhale, starfish open, a big breath in. Exhale, knees into your chest, head comes up. Okay, relax your head back down onto the ground. Grab your feet, happy baby pose. Let's stretch out your back a little bit. You can rock a little bit. If it's too deep, pull behind your knees instead of your feet. Feel that good compression in your hips. And then lift your legs straight up in the air. Arms overhead if you can, out to the side or down at your side if that's too much for you. Start to integrate center body. Feel your core just slightly turn on. And we're gonna lower your legs down. You can go straight or bend your knees at any moment in time. Grab a block and let's stick a block between your thighs. And the block can be high up toward your pelvis or lower down toward your knees or anywhere in between. So you're, you'll, as we go, you can just decide the width and where it is uh, in your body. So we're just gonna turn on um, your inner thigh muscles, your deep core a little bit. So ground through your feet, four corners of your feet moving into the earth. Okay, now as we breathe in, relax a moment. And as you breathe out, we're going to just gently hug that block. Now, while you do this, and we're going to go back and forth breath. So as you inhale, release. And as you exhale, give the block a good hug. Okay. As you do this, see if you can keep the outer edges of your feet grounded. A lot of times we, we tend to do this by just um, drawing in on our feet. See if you can keep outer feet grounded. So we're really working with a lot of different muscles in our center. Make sure you release on your inhales. Notice here your proprioception and your interoception. So relax your head and shoulders and pay attention. Are you feeling more confident or stronger with your capacity to hug the block with one leg versus the other? Do you feel one side of your body kick into gear faster, more fully, more confidently on one side than the other, or do you feel balanced? So it's amazing when we really dive into subtle sensation in the body that we can start to pick up some of these patterns that we have where we are more confident or stronger in one side of the body for different movements than the other. Okay. Now relax the block and grab a strap. And we're going to loop the strap around our thighs. So I have this crazy long strap um, that requires a lot of, uh, you know, finding, finding its way. So I don't know how long your strap is, but make a loop. Okay, so and if you don't have a strap, hopefully you have um, like a bathrobe strap or a scarf or a belt, something that you can tie around your thighs. And then once you have that around your thighs, you want your feet hip width apart. Now, by the way, this action that we just did with the block, as well as this one, you can do with three different foot positions to save time. We're just doing it hip width apart today. If you can do um, both the squeeze to the midline and the pulling away, which we're about to do, with feet together, feet with hip width apart, and feet wider. If you want to do a little bit more thorough nature of turning on um, this pelvic deep core. All right, so now feet are hip width apart, strap is around your thighs, ground your inner feet, big toes, inner heels, rooting. And on our exhales, we're going to pull out into the strap. And on our inhales, we're going to relax. So notice what turns on. Make sure you stay grounded in your inner feet. What's turning on? Are you just using one muscle group? Can you find your transverse abdominis, your deep core? Can you find your pelvic floor? Can you find your glutes? Can you find your IT band muscles, your, your tensor fascial body? Your, you know, there's so many muscles that can and uh, will act if you give them um, you know, the opportunity to do so. 
Keep grounding the inner feet. Notice if your head and shoulders want to get involved. Keep them neutral and relaxed. Try to do the work on the exhale. Release on the inhale. Relax. Take that strap off now. Hopefully your center body is just a little bit more turned on. Bring your knees to your chest and rock a little bit. We have one more thing to do here before we get up. So let's put our feet down onto the ground. Feet are hip width apart. Imagine a teacup on your left knee and we're gonna open the right knee out to the side like that butterfly we did in the beginning and then lift that knee back up and switch your teacup to the right knee. And we're going to open up the left. Now try to do this slowly. Also try to do this without your throat and your neck being the guiding force of control. See if you can relax your upper body and focus on center low belly being very supportive of this. It's what anchors your teacup and it also what originates and stabilizes the movement of your other leg. So root your thigh where the teacup is resting, root that uh, femur bone down into the hip. Try to have no movement there as you open up the other leg out to the side and bring it back in. These are very subtle things. These are all of these three passages of core work we've done are subtle. You could whip through this and feel, you know, just about nothing, but Really try to minimize your teacup leg and slowly move your other leg so you can start to notice all of these other small muscles in your core and in your hips that do a lot of the stabilization for you. Are you breathing? Can your head and neck relax? Relax, just be in neutral for a moment. Take your hands onto your low belly and breathe there. Roll over onto our side. When you're ready, there's no rush. If you're liking breathing into your hands, just let your body breathe there for a moment and then come onto all fours when you feel ready. Okay, so feel, before you even start moving into cat cows, feel your hands on the ground. Feel where you're touching, root your roots. Okay, and then find your movement of your spine. So the arching and the rounding of the back. Feeling your pelvis move, feeling your head move. See if you can start, if your eyes are closed, that's great. If your eyes are open, that's great. And if your eyes are open, or when you do eventually open them, see if you can start softening your gaze instead of burrowing your gaze. Let your um, mind start to move into your dristy, your gaze points, with a sense of softness. Okay, move around any way you want to move around. Wag your tail, roll your hips, move around in your shoulders, spin your head. Anything that feels good. Right arm lifting up. Exhale, slide that shoulder under and take a twist. So feel the awakening of your spine. Enjoy your breathing. Let your head rest. Gaze toward the ground so your neck is nice and easy. Especially if you felt like, I feel like anytime you use your core, you use your neck. We want to start being able to identify those tension patterns as best as we can and let them go. Lift that arm up in the air. That hand comes down. Change sides. Arm up. Exhale. Arm under. All right, breathing deeply. That arm back up in the air. 
Hands down on the ground. Spread out the hands. Feel that grounding again. Stretch your right leg straight back behind you. Pulse your leg a few times. Start to feel your core kick into gear. Okay, turn your toes down toward the ground. And now we're gonna move our, we're gonna slide our leg out and back in. So out to the side and back in. Release, stretch back to child's pose, stretch open your hands, other side, up onto all fours, other leg straight back behind you. Now see if you can pay attention. Does this feel leg feel as confident as the other? Pulse a few times. Press your other shin into the ground. And now we're going to move the leg out to the side and back in. Now same, just like when we were doing the teacups, can you feel super stable in your center body as you move your leg? So we're not just kind of flinging it out and bringing it in, but noticing what stabilizes us when we move our leg in this way. And then relax back to child's pose. Settle your hips. Let's walk the hands over to one side or the other, your choice. Breathing into the ribs and let it open up. Find that spaciousness in your side. Over to the other side, let that shoulder stretch open, drop your sit bones down, breathing well. Coming back to center, back up onto all fours again. Okay, let's stretch your right leg straight back behind you, left arm out in front of you. So move, we're just gonna hold here for just a moment and see if you can feel your center body. Press your shin into the ground, stabilize your core. When you're ready, slowly exhale and bring that elbow and knee underneath you, and then bring it back out. And when you do this, see if you can lose the wobble. As much as you can, feel those subtleties of stabilization. So you're not kind of all over the place um, when you do this. Try to feel as steady as you can. And then let's bring that arm and leg out. And now bring it out to the side. Leg and arm out to the side. Press your left shin into the ground. Use your core back to center and place that hand and knee down onto the ground. Let's change sides. So now we're going to lift up our left leg, square the hips, try not to let the lift, the hip lift higher and bring your right arm out in front of you. Stabilize your core, press your shin and hand into the ground, feel where you're rooted. How's your breath? Try not to hold your breath. Inhale to lengthen out, exhale to come underneath you. Move slowly. Sometimes we can whip through this and go really fast. Other times we can just slow down and really feel, uh, try to be as steady as you can. Your drift, your eye gaze is steady and soft. Your breath is moving through you. Let's do one more. Reach it out. Now arm and leg out to the side. Toes down, thumb up. Find your center. Breathing, relax your neck. And then come back to the center line. Come back to child's pose. Shake out your wrists. You can rock your hips left and right if you want. And let's come to dog pose. Stretch out through your body. If you're not happy being on your hands, again, maybe do this on your forearms if you're, you know, have your fill of being on your hands. Pedal your feet. Let your calves start to open up. See if you can feel a, a deep stretch of that heel dropping down toward the ground. After a couple of movements of Pedaling, come into stillness, round hands and feet, root to rise. 
Feel the extension in the body. Notice your hands. Where does weight naturally go? Is it in your wrists? Kind of the heel of your hand, heel of your outer hand. See if you can drop into anywhere that's not naturally having that uh, weight. Maybe the index finger mounds need a little bit more weight. Breathing well. Same with the feet. Do you lean into your big toe side or pinky toe side? Drop into all five toes. Okay, with Tanasana, walk your feet forward. Bring your hands on two blocks if you want to, or your hands can be on the ground or on your legs. Soften your knees, let your head bobble here. Breathing well. A halfway lift. Hold on to the blocks now um, so that you have that long extension in the spine and let's feel the feet, the big toe mounds, the outer toe mounds, the inner heel, the outer heel, or maybe just the center heel. So you can think like a tripod or uh, four points of contact, whichever feels good. So ground your feet, lift the arches, ground the bones. And now as you have that alternating movement pattern where you're rooting, but you're also rising up through the arches, see if you can rise all the way to the inner groins and the outer hips as you descend. Just like, um, you know how tree branches kind of match the roots, right? So imagine that as much lift as you're getting up toward the hips, you can also drop down into the earth that far. And then relax. Soften your body, bend your knees, melt your head. Rising on up, arms coming to the sky. Open up, lean back a little bit if it feels good. Cactus your arms if it feels good. Just find some freedom in the upper body. And then release your hands down. Interlace your hands behind you, chest open, bend forward. Knees are soft and bent, head is relaxed. And release your hands back down to the ground. A halfway lift. Feel those four corners or three points of feet. Exhale and melt. Okay, step your left foot back. Right foot is in front, finding a lunge. So start to move, bending and straightening your knee. Let this be not only about opening your legs, but finding your breath rhythm. Also, let it be about teaching your eyes to softly gaze instead of harden in their gaze. Do you tend to practice with your eyes open? Do you tend to practice with your eyes shut? You know, where, where, how much do you rely on your vision to help you in your practice? What our vision is such a huge part of the cueing of our balance. So what happens when that gets taken away a little bit? I'm sure all of you have done a practice with me before blindfolded, where we've you know, purposely uh, taken away our vision. And that can be an interesting exercise in uh, humility, right? But also in, in how much we rely on our eyes for our balance. Come on up, crescent lunge. So feel into that length and space in your body, knit your ribs in, try not to over arch and sink into the pelvis. Find your breath. Press your front heel down into the ground. Find your whole front foot. And then release your hands down onto the block. Hop up onto your right foot. We're going to do um, some little toe lifts here. So up onto your toes and then back down onto your heel. And of course, if your toes can't handle this kind of pressure, you just do you, find what you can do. Be active in that leg in the air. So your glutes on both sides are turned on. And then pause with your heel down onto the ground. Square your hips, extend your spine, find your breath. Exhale, tuck in your knee next to or behind Jiva squat. Feel your body, hands are on blocks. Relax your head, push slowly off your foot to straighten your, straighten your legs again. Twice more. Exhale to drop in. Inhale to press out. Exhale to drop in. Inhale 
to press out and put your foot down next to your other foot. Transfer weight evenly. Just wait until you feel that sense of balance. Relax your knees. Soften your skull. Halfway lift. Spine gets longer. Open up your calves. Exhale and release again. Left foot in front. Right foot comes back. Lunging. Feel the heart open. Feel your breath. Start to move when you're ready. Bending and straightening the front knee. Let your head bow. If you want to, let your chest open. Just find that movement of breath, the softness of your gaze. Even if your eyes are closed, melt your eyes behind your lids. Lose the straining of vision. Come to your lunge, ground yourself. Come on up, crescent lunge, arms to the sky. Open your body up. Arms go wherever you want them. So maybe your hands are on your hips. Maybe arms overhead doesn't feel good for you today. So anything that supports your well-being, drop into your front foot. See if you can get the weight of your foot to find the ground. Can you feel and sense what's happening underneath that front foot? Release your hands down, come up into half splits. Find that leg in the air, see if you can stretch it back. And let's lift up into onto our toes and back down. And even, you know, if your toes can't handle a lot of that pressure, that's okay. Maybe just have a micro lift of your heel. It doesn't have to be big. Find your breathing. And then square the hips, heels down onto the ground, lengthen your spine. As you're ready, Jiva squat, tuck in, knee next to or behind, relax your head down. Slowly push off that foot and straighten your legs and your spine. Exhale to descend, softly move down in, let your eyes relax. Inhale, press straight. Try moving fairly slowly. Try not to just whip through these things. So notice muscles. Notice what stabilizes you. What turns on in these poses. And then place that other foot down. Halfway lift. Spine grows. Exhale and fold. Let your neck relax. Soften your gaze. Let's step back to dog pose. Spine gets along again. Root, hands and feet. Where are you touching the ground? Root down. How's the breath? Melt the skull. Let your eyes soften. Come forward into a plank. Start to turn on your core again. Breathing well. Let's spin our navel over to the right. Welcome your obliques. Back to center, over to the left. Back to center. Slowly lower yourself down, find the ground. The elbows can, our knees can come down first if you need it. A couple of shoulder rolls, just loosen things up. Inhale, cobra pose. Chest open, exhale, and melt back down. One more time. Rising up and relax. Now come up on tall fours. Move your spine around. Wag your tail. See what it feels like to move and stretch. Curl your toes under. Move back towards child's pose with your toes curled under. Touch your inner ankles. Touch your big toe edges. Spread your feet. Up to dog pose, lengthen through your spine, drop your heels as best as you can, spread the bones of your feet open, lift your sit bones as you descend your heels. Walk your feet forward, come to Uttanasana, relax your head. 
Bring your blocks under your hands, halfway lift. While we're in this halfway lift, feet are hip width apart. Let's pull, isometrically drag your feet apart from each other and find the sidelines of your bodies. Glutes turning on, your outer hips hopefully turning on. Root into the feet and then relax. Let's stick a block between our thighs and come into chair pose. So as we find this posture, drop in. Remember that pose we did in the beginning where we were hugging the block? Very gently hug the block, just enough to turn it like a flashlight into your pelvic floor and your core. Reach your arms overhead if you want to. Find your breath. So settle your weight into your heels. Toes and feet are broad and spreading. Now, even though we're hugging the block, isometrically drag your feet apart from each other. So you turn the outer line of your body on and hug the block at the same time. Okay, stand on up. Relax, let's take that block out of there and stand in Tadasana for a moment. Notice, you know, we've gone through much of class without taking one foot off the ground yet. So, so much preparation for balance. And if you're working on trying to um, get better at balancing, a lot of what we've already done is great resourcing for developing strength and awareness in the places in your body that you need for balance. Bring your legs a little closer together, come into chair pose again. You can have your arms overhead if you want, but you can certainly take a different um, pathway. Drop weight into your right foot. We're gonna hover your left foot off the ground. First balance posture. Notice if your leg gets wobbly, see if you can feel that teacup stability. And then we're gonna slowly lift your leg straight. The knee comes up in the air. Maybe the arms come, arms come high. And we're gonna come right back down. This might be harder to come down. And then one more time, lifting straight up, knee in the air. We're going to add a twist to this, turning to the side. And hands can be on your hips. They don't have to be out in the air. Find your center body. Back to center. Put that foot down onto the ground. And maybe just shake out your legs. Sometimes shaking just gives that different feedback. Find the way for you. And ground yourself again. Tadasana. Find your breath. Root into two feet four or three corners. So maybe you like the feeling of the center heel point. Maybe you like to feel into the two sides of your heel, feel into the big toe mounts, the outer, the pinky toe mounts. So find your feet, unlock your knees. If there's any pose that could teach us something about balance, it's this, right? So do you feel centered? Do you feel grounded? Are you connecting to the earth? Do you have sensation of that proprioception of where you are in space, the tactile feeling of your feet, finding the earth, the energetic feeling of going deeper than just where your feet are, the softening of joints. If we lock out joints, that kind of balance doesn't hold us when we shift and sway. If we lock our knees, we might feel like, oh, I have better balance this way. But if someone came and knocked into you, um, you wouldn't get very far. You know, so soft joints are receptive joints. They're able to adapt and react to balance challenges. Breathing well. Okay, now let's come into chair pose again. Feet can be close together. You can have your arms out or wherever you want them to be, which helps your balance. We're gonna drop our weight into our left foot. So feel your roots over your right foot on the ground. Try to minimize the wobble of your left knee as best as you can. Let go of expectations and judgments. So we're not judging ourselves for what we can and can't do. Feel your foot, feel your core, feel, feel your pelvic floor, your outer hips, your glutes. 
Okay, and then we're gonna slowly rise up, bringing the knee up, unlock your standing knee, and then slowly lower back down. Dristy, soft gaze. Keep the breath fluid in the body. And then stand up again, lifting that knee. Unlock your standing knee, hug the hip in. Twist here, find your breath. Use your deep core. And reaching the arms back up. Put your foot down onto the ground. Palms together at your heart. Samastitihi. This is equal balance pose. So can you close your eyes for a moment and feel that um, searching for balance between your left and right sides, between your front and back? top and bottom, between inside and outside, come into your center. Inhale, reach the arms up in the air, exhale, and float forward again. Halfway lift, spine is growing. Exhale and melt back down. Step back to all fours. Okay. Um, we're going to come into Vasistasana. We're going to do it a slightly different way than sometimes we normally do it. So, right hand on the ground. We're going to take our right shin uh, parallel to the mat so that it's in line. Your shin and or your your knee, your shin, and your foot are all in line with your hand, and then your other heel down onto the ground. Now, this might be enough. You might be like, wow, I'm on a tightrope. So find your way, resist the urge to take your right hand back. Now, normally I would say that's fine. Just take your right hand out to the right more to give you more of a tripod kind of feeling. But I want you to feel that edge of being on a tightrope kind of feeling. Find your core. Soften your gaze, move into your breath, press your whole shin into the ground, and then start to maybe pick up your foot so your leg comes up in the air. Now you may keep your foot on the ground, so balance isn't about doing the most extreme thing, it's finding your way. Press your shin into the ground, engage your core and your outer hips, soften your gaze and breathe. So all these things, even though you know, this is not uh, standing on one foot. Come out of there, come to all fours. These are the skills that build so that when you're on a hike and you have to walk over a log, over a creek, you have it. You have the ability to do something like that. When you have to step on a sidewalk that's uneven, you have the ability to manage those kinds of stressors. Okay, so right, um, we're moving over to the left. Left hand, left knee, left foot, right heel, all on one line. You can take your hand a little forward of the shoulder instead of directly under the shoulder. So just if an inch or two forward might be more helpful. Shoulder blades down the back. Lift the arm in the air. Now this might be where you stay because this is a lot of uh, training of the nervous system just right here. If you have a little something extra to give the posture, lift your leg in the air, press your shin. And if you're wobbly, that's awesome. Let yourself find your center through the wobbles, soft gaze and move with breath. If you were stuck and static all the time, this wouldn't train the nervous system very well, would it? So the mobility and the wobbles are what train you for balance. All right, come down onto all fours, move your spine around, maybe a cat cow, whatever feels nice. And then rest for a moment in child's pose. It's sneaky how much of a workout this kind of stuff is for your nervous system. There's a lot of awareness of proprioception where you are in space. And this skill in our nervous system, we 
we can get lazy in this skill when we trot in the same path in our bodies over and over throughout every day. So the more you challenge yourself in unusual ways, walk on unstable things, you know, go to the playground and um, just find things that you can do on a, on a playground, children's playground that are feel safe to you to practice with movement patterns that are taking you into wabi-sabi, you know, taking you into that off-kilter thing. So you can practice the art of balance. Breathing well. Let's come up to stand. You can move through a dog pose if you want, or you can just come up to stand however you want to be. All right, so ground yourself. We're going to move into tree pose, but before we do, feel your roots. Feel your, your sense of the earth. Let your nervous system um, be light bulbs all on of where you are in space. If you need a wall nearby, you can always manage um, balance poses with some support. So you can have your foot high up at your inner thigh. You can also have your uh, heel, uh, I'm sorry, your foot high up at your inner thigh. You can also have your foot on your, an uh, on your ankle. You can even have your toes on the ground or anywhere. I just wouldn't put your heel into your inner knee. Um, that can you know, mess with you a little bit. Now, if you're wobbly, try an arm position that gives you a little more balance. Like maybe your arms straight out to the sides instead of your hands up or to the center. So soften the knee you're standing on. Soften your gaze, the dristy gaze, that ability to look at something softly, move with breath, yield into the earth. Hug the hip in, the knee is soft. Allow that other knee to float back. Integrate your ribs, find your pelvic floor, relax your neck, soften your eyes. And slowly find your way out. Sometimes, you know, we when we're in a balance pose, we hold on tight, we hold on tight, and then when it's time to come out, we just kind of like flomp out. So another piece of training your balance is the going in and the getting out. Um, so it's amazing how we can hold ourselves. And then the minute you feel like you don't have to anymore, you could, you could lose your balance. So maintain your gaze, maintain your focus as you both move in and out of the pose. Try not to hold your breath. It's so easy. So keep your awareness on that flowing breath, the soft gaze. Notice if you're locking anything out to be in this posture. Are you crunching your toes or locking your knee or locking your diaphragm and not breathing? So standing leg has a micro bend in the knee and the hip is hugging in. Put your arms anywhere that serves. Ribs face forward and see if you can pull your knee back. Your um, knee in the air, draw it back toward the wall behind you. Relax and slowly come out, slowly, slowly. And I want you to stand at the back of your mat. And we're going to walk with soft gaze eyes, with breathing body. And very slowly, we're going to lift one knee up, stretch that foot out and place your foot so that your heel touches the toes. Okay. And then place that foot down. Notice the transfer of weight. Knee comes up, heel comes out. Place your heel right in front of your toes. So we're walking on a balance beam that's imaginary. You can have your arms out to the sides if you want. Now challenge yourself by not looking at the ground. Look forward when you do this. So you trust that you have a sense of the ground without your eyes telling you where it is. So breathing, the knee comes up, the leg stretches straight or however you go, and then place that foot heel down in front of the other toes. Now maybe even challenge yourself beyond looking forward, close your eyes. It's amazing how closing your eyes shifts everything. So just do the best that you can, feel the ground. When your foot lands, land it, sink it. 
Feel the earth below you. All right, so there's different stages. There's stopping, looking at the ground and looking forward and trusting the ground. And then there's the added challenge of closing your eyes if you so desire. Once that foot lands, land it, root it. All right. I'm, I'm done, but maybe you're not yet. So whenever you get to, you'll feel the front edge of your mat and find your breath. And now come back to the back edge of your mat again. We're gonna start by lifting our right foot, okay? And once again, you can have your arms out. So I want you to find that you can knee up and place that foot down, knee up. We're moving a little faster that you're not relying on your vision to see your feet, to know where your feet are in space. It's amazing how as we lose balance in our lives, we look down always, which is a good thing when you're walking on uneven terrain and you gotta see where you're stepping, but your mat is not uneven terrain. This is a smooth surface that you can trust. So you do not need your vision. Use your proprioception, know where your feet are. And then land, once you're finished walking, come to the center of your mat again. Find your breath. We're going to stand on our right leg. Lift the left knee up. One more time, arms coming up. Now we're gonna to twist to the side and turn your gaze all the way back toward the wall behind you. Can you have a sense of, a, of awareness, like your vision is in the front body still, but your actual vision is behind you? Soft knee that you're standing on. Drop the hip that's in the air. Back to center. Place that foot down onto the ground and change sides. Stand on your left. Bring your right knee up. Arms can come up or hands can stay on the hips. Whatever feels good. Twist. Turn your gaze as far back as you can get it while well, still be very aware of the front of your body. Put eyes in the front of your body and eyes toward the back wall. Notice your breath. Okay, come back to center. Put that foot down and onto the ground. Last thing we'll do, just up on two toes, or two sets of toes, two feet on your toes. Find your breath. Notice if your balance is pretty good right now. You know, if you can do this without a whole lot of wobbling. And then heels down, samastiti, palms together. Close your eyes for a moment. See if you can become aware of your body. Know where your edges are. Feel the ground. Know your back body. Feel it in space. Know your front body, your side bodies, the top of your head, soles of your feet. Map yourself without your eyes. Have gratitude for our nervous system that we're able to map ourselves in space without our eyes. And now, arms up, float forward, Uttanasana, relax. If you feel like doing a vinyasa, just to kind of settle yourself in your body, by all means, otherwise come to child's pose. So dog pose or child's pose. You can come forward into a plank if you want. You can bring your knees down and come to uh, a cobra pose or any back bend, or maybe you're just in child's pose. We'll all end up in child's pose. Now enjoy the comfort of being so close to the ground. The nervous system loves this. If you want to have your arms down at your sides, that's great. If you want to block under your head or head on the floor, find the pathway that's right for you. Enjoy the contact with the ground. And come onto your back. 
bringing your knees to your chest. Feel the earth below you, so feel everywhere you're touching the ground. And let's find Shavasana. So legs stretch out, any support that you need or any posture that you need to help complete your practice, whatever feels best for you. Once you do settle, notice where you touch the ground. Let's map the back body on the earth. So the back of the head, feel where your arms are touching the ground, the elbows, the upper arms, the backs of the hands. Notice where your shoulder blades are touching. Notice anywhere your spine might find the earth. Notice the pelvis. Notice the backs of your calves, your heels. So you have a, a map of your body in space and can relax the whole body. So melt and get as heavy as you can while resting. Let your head get heavy. Soften your eyes. Off in the outer corners of your eyes. Relax your jaw. Melt in your tongue. Feel so heavy. When you are ready, begin to deepen your breathing. 
some in here. A little bit of movement. Eventually finding your way to your side. Come on up. Get set as you're ready. Put your hands together at your heart. And feel the centering again. Let your third eye relax into the space of centering. The vision is soft behind your eyelids. You feel the center of your palms at your heart. Let the centered energy offer the concentration of this outward, send your healing, loving, kind energy to another. Namaste. To everyone, 